Hey, welcome to Veto Day 29. <laughs> we only have a few more days left. Can't believe it. I actually have more ideas than I have days left for videos. So when Veto's over, I'm still going to keep doing maybe a few videos here and there, not every day, clearly, because it really is hard to get up the motivation for sure. Um, today I'm going to talk about breastfeeding. I'm going to talk about the top five uh, problems and solutions for breastfeeding. Um, I'm not like a lactation specialist or anything. Um, I used to be uh, a working RN. I'm still an RN, but I'm not working. Um, I just really like breastfeeding, and I've had a lot of issues. So I kind of just want to share what my solutions have been and the things that I've looked up for these problems. So um, the first one is uh, <clears throat> bad latch or nipple pain. And I kind of went in order of when these problems happen. So at the beginning, the baby's like really lazy and they don't want to latch on very well to your breast. So um, a good thing to do is when they open your ma their mouth, which they usually do if you give them like a taste of it or let them smell the colostrum, they'll open up their mouth and right when they open, you want to put your finger right on their chin and make them open further. Like make them open their mouth as, as far as they can go. That helps them to latch a little bit better. Um, also, you want to make sure their lips are flanged out on your breast. So I'm going to demonstrate this. <laughs> I hope this doesn't look too ridiculous, but here's a pair. I'm going to first show you the wrong way. And then I'll show you the right way. So, okay, so in the second one, you see all my lips were up like that, and if they're not up um, when the baby goes on, you can pull them up a little bit as the baby's nursing. That won't disrupt them. Like, they'll keep going. So that helps with the latch usually, um, and that should help with nipple pain as well. Sometimes people, moms get nipple pain because of uh, thrush. Um, a good thing to do for thrush is be on a lot of probiotics, like a really good one. Um, 20 billion or more that should help with the thrush um, what else uh, a nipple shield I don't have much experience with the nipple shield but if your nipples get like raw and bleeding you can use that mine never got that bad but um, you can use the nipple shield you'll just have to google it and order one um, <clears throat> also let's think here nipple pain um, yeah, just look at their latch. I mean, a lot of it is based on how they're latching. So sometimes they just get lazy and they just don't want to open their mouth wide enough and they start like nibbling on your nipple and that hurts. So that's it for bad latch or nipple paint. I hope you like that demonstration. Number two is um, engorgement. I had engorgement really, really bad with all of my babies, but especially my first one. Um, the best thing to do for engorgement is to ice. I'll show you the ice packs I use. They're huge <laughs> because your breasts are huge at this point. I mean, they are huge. So I have two of these that I put on my breasts and I usually wear like a zip up hoodie just like this and um, maybe like a nursing tank like this and you can put them in your tank top and zip zip up your hoodie and it compresses everything really well and it holds the ice packs together or on you. Um, you wanna do that after you nurse and you wanna do it every single time you nurse if your engorgement's really, really bad because it real, really will work. So you don't wanna make your supply too, too low, um, but I, I never had issues with that. So my biggest problem was I wasn't icing enough. I would ice during the day, but I wouldn't ice at night. And finally, with both my second and my third, once I started icing at night, so I or iced every single time I nursed, then I woke up, and the next morning, my breasts were not rock hard anymore, so I was very thankful. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to mention about the nipple pain. You need to get Lansino, um, Lanolin. It's in a purple container and it really really helps um, just protect your nipples so you put that on after every time you nurse that should really help um, yeah sorry I mentioned that so um, so the icing helps with engorgement you do that after every time you nurse and if you're still after your nurse you're still really hard 
you can pump. Like it's not going to mess up the supply demand if you pump a little bit, get that pressure off. You want the pressure to come off because you don't want to get an infection. So I didn't do that with my first. I didn't know I was like allowed to do that. And I really wish I had done that earlier. It was just so uncomfortable for so long. So don't worry. You can totally pump some of that pressure off and you can totally ice after every feeding and that should help your engorgement go away very quickly. Um, it shouldn't last seven days or 10 days like mine did, but if you have crazy supply coming in, it might. So that's engorgement. Plugged duct or mastitis. Um, what you want to do with a plug duct is it's a little bit tricky to tell it's coming on, but what, what will happen is you'll feel like a little bit of a tingling as the baby's nursing. It won't really hurt. It'll just tingle. It'll just feel a little weird. And the baby starts to not prefer that side. So you kind of start going on the other side more, but you shouldn't do that. Um, that should be your first clue, that the baby doesn't like that side and that you feel the tingling. Um, then your supply goes down on that side, which, again, the baby starts to not like that side because that side doesn't have as much milk. Um, and then you'll have a little bit of pain with nursing. And if you can catch it at this stage, it's awesome. You can really work on it and do try to get that plug out. So um, once you've noticed all three of those signs, you can get a heat pad. Uh, this is a rice heat pad, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure what's in it. I think it's rice. You just heat it up in the microwave for like a minute, and it stays really hot. And I just put it right on the area that's hurting and I walk around and, and tend to my other kids do whatever I have to do um, right before I nurse I put this on so and then it excuse me it helps the milk flow better and it will help the plug come out especially if you do the second thing I'm going to recommend which is um, do circle and pressure so you're going to massage if you can find where the plug is you're going to massage it and pretty firmly as the baby's nursing. So you want the heat and you want the massage. For me, the heat always worked a lot better than the massage. If I massaged without heat, it did nothing. So I needed to have the heat and sometimes only heat was better than um, no heat. At, like if I just didn't massage but I just did the heat, it was better. So um, those are the things that work for me for plug ducts. Also, um, if, if you have a lot of plug ducts or mastitis, um, you might want to consider going on a supplement called Lecithin, and I actually recommend either the Sunflower Recommend or the non-GMO because it's a soy, it's soy Lecithin. Um, my baby actually gets really irritated when I give him the regular Lecithin, but if I give him the non-GMO Lecithin, he's fine. Like, he won't spit up and cry as much. It's really funny, but... Anyway, I have to take that all the time, every day while I'm nursing, because it prevents the, the plug ducts. So um, you might have to do that. It's not a big deal if you have to. It's really cheap. So, um, And then, and here's another thing I just found just recently, a homeopathic that really helps with uh, plug ducts, because I, I still get some, even with the lecithin, is uh, Phytolacca. It's a homeopathic. It comes in this little container. You can get it online on Amazon, or you can get it at, like, Whole Foods. Stick it under your tongue and um, put three of them under your tongue, if, like, at an hour or so in between each dose for, like, a day or two, and it should really resolve your problems. So um, that is plug ducts. If you don't do all those things before, um, <clears throat> if you don't catch your plug duct, it will turn into mastitis. So um, try to catch it and try to work on it so it doesn't turn into mastitis. Well, if you have mastitis, there's not much you can do other than um, get on an antibiotic. Um, I don't recommend home therapies as much for mastitis because I think they can turn serious so quickly. So if you have red streaking going on and, if, and you're in so much pain that when you stand up or when you walk or when you unhook your bra to nurse, you can't even do those things because you're in that much pain, that's mastitis. That's And it's awful. It's really red, it's hot, and there's usually a streak going on. It's bad. So you want to get on antibiotic immediately. You want to see your OB and get that antibiotic in your system. But even after that, you still need to pump and nurse really, really frequently, which I didn't mention. <laughs> you need to nurse frequently when you have um, a plug duct. Try to like add at least one feeding, um, if not more. So, or pump, maybe at night, if your baby's sleeping through the night, do some pumping, like, at nighttime. 
and even after you get the antibiotic, it's good to um, keep pumping and keep massaging and keep using the heat because you still want to get that plug out even though you're not going to get an infection because the antibiotic, you still have a plug that you need to get out. So that's that for plug duct or bestitis. Sorry that that one is long. Um, low milk. Okay, this is something usually you don't encounter until a little bit later on, six months, eight months. Um, if you have low milk, the first thing to do is pump frequently. Usually if you nurse more frequently and pump more frequently, um, that should do the trick. Add one or two more feedings and then pump after your feedings. Um, also eat more. Just eat more. <laughs> I mean, it sucks, but it really makes a difference. Like you'll see the next morning, you'll probably wake up way more full if you eat more and drink more. Just make sure you're eating a lot, drinking a lot, and pumping and nursing a lot. If those things don't work, um, there's a couple home, no, supplements you can take. Um, I've looked into alfalfa. It didn't really work for me, but it's definitely one that people take. Here's um, another one's fenugreek. Um, fenugreek is probably the most popular. I really think it just makes you want to eat more, <laughs> and so um, which makes your milk supply go up. So. Um, fenugreek and blessed thistle together usually works. Um, you could try that. Or the thing that worked for me was uh, <clears throat> brewer's yeast. Brewer's yeast is awesome for me. I notice a huge difference even now if my supply is down. I will take four of these and then the next day it will be up again. Um, if it's really, really down, I'll take three, two or three times a day and it'll be up the next morning. It's awesome. So brewer's yeast is great. Um, and then last thing is weaning. Number five is weaning. Um, when you're weaning, I would suggest dropping a feeding once a week. So if you're not in a rush, that would be the best way to do it. So um, when I weaned Joel, I had him at like three feedings already. And so I just dropped one feeding and then waited a week and then dropped another one. It's really easy if you're doing it really late and your supply is low anyway. It's not too hard. But I would definitely recommend dropping only one feeding per week so that way you don't get the plugged ducks or, you know, the full feeling that too much milk. So I hope you enjoyed. Those are my breastfeeding problems and solutions. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.